What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jay Renee, with Prison Ride Radio. I hope that you're doing well. This evening, we got a brother on the phone by the name of Philip Vance Smith II. He's a writer, among other things. We're going to get into it. So we're going to holler at him and see how he got into his craft, what he has going on, and, you know, just see what's up with him. All right, bro, thanks for pulling up on us. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right, for sure. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. Tell the people a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Uh, I was born in Chicago, raised in Georgia. I moved to North Carolina uh, about 98. I've been incarcerated in North Carolina since 2002. Uh, started writing in prison. Uh, started publishing around 2014. Never looked back. I've published fiction, non-fiction, I have a poetry book out, I write journalism, um, you know, basically what I do is I talk about what goes on in prisons, I advocate for the reduction of sentences, the eradication of mandatory minimum sentencing, and the end of mass incarceration as a whole. Okay. Well, definitely congratulations on being published, you know what I mean, that's definitely an achievement. Especially one when you behind the G wall, and definitely thank you and appreciation to the work that you do outside of yourself, bringing awareness to things that's going on when it comes to the judicial system and prison and stuff like that. That's very very important. So we're gonna get into it. All right. So what made you want to start writing? Like, what's one of the first things that you wrote and what made you decide I want to do this? All right, bro, so let us know, like, what got you into writing? Like, what made you decide that writing was a way that you wanted to express yourself to the world? Actually, it was a friend's mother who wrote me a letter, and she uh, asked me to write a, a book about my life. So I wrote it back, and I told her that I didn't think my life was interesting. And she wrote me, and she said, well, look, I'll send you $80 for every chapter that you send me. So I started writing that night. Because I needed money. Mm-hmm. You're in prison, you're poverty stricken. And that was a way uh, that I could get help without having to do things like sell drugs and stuff like that. So yeah. I started writing, lost contact with her, but I kept on writing. And uh, over the years, you know, I, so I guess I started out like everybody else, just writing stories, fiction stories. And then over time, I started writing poetry. And then later in life, I recognized so many injustices Mm -hmm. in the prison system. And I thought that it would be a tragedy if I did not use my talent to talk about these these injustices and bring them to life. The only way we'll be able to fix them is if people know about them. For sure. All right, so what was the first thing that you wrote about that was... Um, you know, about what's going on with the prisons and stuff like that. Can you remember? Yeah, the very first thing was I wrote an article for a magazine called The Humanist about a lawsuit that uh, my friend Kwame Teague filed with the American Humanist Association. And uh, he won the right to practice humanism in uh, prisons in North Carolina. This call is from a North Carolina correctional facility which for us was a, a groundbreaking lawsuit because the prison system here is, is notorious yeah. for you know trying to stop people from practicing a religion. So that was the first piece of, uh, of journalism that I wrote, I think, that reflected on, on something we did to change the system. Okay. I know that had to be, like, that's something big when, when you know, especially what I see in North Carolina, even though I've seen a lot of different things that prisons do, North Carolina is is crazy, it seems like, when it comes to certain rules. So I know that having that definitely meant something for sure because they, they are very iron fist in some ways, you know what I mean? If it's not what they think it should be, they're not trying to have it be, you know what I mean? So... Um, tell us, like, what was your biggest thing that you wrote that you feel that could be most impactful well, or visibly seen? I think there are two. The first one, I wrote an article for Huffington Post. I think it's called Huff Poe Now. Um, and it was about 
how understaffing in prisons leads to overcrowding, which in turn leads to violence, which also leads to recidivism. And so I compartmentalized all those different arguments into one piece, and I used a real depiction of an uh, incident of violence that I witnessed at Nash Correctional Institution, where a guy had another guy with a cane. And the, the odd thing about it was, you know, usually the police run in and, and stop that. Right. But there weren't enough police around because the prison was understaffed, and we literally had one officer working the whole unit that day. And so two, two prisoners went over there and stopped it. And it was crazy that, that we have to do that. You know, and some people will say, oh, y'all got to police yourselves, but prison t- typically isn't like that. You know, usually we stay out of the way. And so I wrote about how that understaffing affects us because Nash is severely overcrowded right now. Mm-hmm. They got 108 people in a cell block meant for, for 60. Yeah. All right, bro. Go ahead. It's on you. Two things that I, I think are groundbreaking. The first was an article that I published in Huff Post, which was about understaffing in prisons. At the time, I was at Nash Correction Institution, and they had, you know, 108 guys in a block that was meant for 60. Uh, it was very crowded, and they didn't have enough staff to, to maintain. So, you know, I wrote the article about the incident of violence that I witnessed. And the dynamic is, is not that I witnessed violence, but that when the violence happened, you know, there was no officers around to stop it. Uh, mm-hmm. Two inmates had to come in and break it up, which was unusual for us. And I, I thought, all right, this, this is getting out of hand now. So I wrote about it. Uh, it got, got me a lot of negative attention in the prison uh, as far as staff goes. This call is from a North Carolina correctional facility. And the other thing, that I published, uh, well, actually it's published by Bleak House Publishing, uh, was a book of poetry called okay. Life, uh, which is an acronym for learning instructions for everyone inside and out of prison. So published in January, and uh, I never I never wanted to publish poetry for me. Yeah. I, I enjoy writing poetry, but mm. I didn't necessarily want to publish it. And I met an editor, and uh, about we, we met about something else, and I showed her some of my poetry, and next thing I know, she wanted to do a book with me. So right now, my publisher says it is the best-selling book of his company. So wow. I'm pretty impressed with that. Yeah, that's amazing. Definitely congratulations again, you know what I mean, on being published and being able to write for different things like Huffington Post and different publications. That's something really major, bro. And you are part of history. You know what I mean? You are part of history. So what do you have going on now? Well, right now I'm working on several pieces. Uh, got a piece working with the inquest. Nothing has been solidified, but it's about, in essence, restorative justice, which means that you pair a victim and uh, you know perpetrator, for lack of a better word, together, so that they can dialogue about the crime that was committed and how it affected each person. And in this case, uh, I met a guy. He's got a murder charge, and he connected with the victim's mother. Um, they've reconciled, and over the last few years, you know, they've built a relationship, and now she calls him her son. So we're wow. trying to publish that. Yeah. We're working on another piece with bolts. Um, and that piece is about healthcare in prisons, how expensive it is, and just to give you some context, uh, North Carolina spent $357.4 million in healthcare uh, for prison mm-hmm. from 2021 to 2022. And that's up 40% from the previous four years before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, healthcare is quadrupling right now. So my argument is, the best way to reduce that is to decarcerate and mm-hmm. start letting people go turn to a system of parole. I interviewed a young lady named uh, B. Bolton. Mm-hmm. She is the co-host of a podcast called Death Panel. She's an expert in her field and mm-hmm. she agrees with me. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get that one out within the next month or two. So yeah, I'm, okay. I'm always working. Never a dull moment in prison. Okay, we're definitely going to have to keep our eye out for that. Speaking of having our eye on it, 
how can um you know people keep up with what you got going on and also how can they show support well first of all i've got a email address where they can reach out to me at any time it's, it's maintained through a third party it is philip vance smith two that's the numeral two at gmail.com and also it is currently under construction. It should be up at this is the end of the week. Okay. It is Philip Vance, it is Philip Vance Smith two dot com. Okay. And I've got on. updates on all my latest projects, some of my older projects, awards that I've won, and other contact information. Okay, for sure. Um, before we disconnect, bro, I want to give you an opportunity to just address our platform and our listeners. With whatever you want to drop, it could be some words of wisdom or anything you got. So the floor is yours. Okay, if I have to say, any, if I'm going to say anything to the people in the world, I'm going to urge you to vote. That is your right. It is your right to go to the polls and choose the people to put in a position of power to dictate your life. Don't just focus on the president or the governor race. Focus on your local candidates. Focus on your local House representatives because they are the ones that govern laws, not just in prison, but for you. They determine how much you pay in health care, how much you pay in taxes. You can't take it for granted. If you don't participate, you have no room to disagree with anybody. You just let yourself be at the will of anybody. And so... If I want to tell you anything, vote. Get out and vote. That's it. 